Hello and welcome to the System Surveyor 2.0 overview video. When you first sign in the System Surveyor 2.0, what you'll first notice is the favorite section. This is going to be a list of all the sites that are on your site list on the web, but you'll also have an all sites section, and this will be all sites that you have access to across any teams that you are invited to. You do have the ability to search and filter by specific teams on both the favorites and all sites section. To create a site, you'll hit this plus in the bottom right hand corner, and this will allow you to create both a new site and a site grouping. As you see here, I can create a new site grouping and decide what team that I want that grouping to go to. If you hit new site, this is what you'll see where you can give your site a name, uh, address, city, all the location information that you find necessary for your site. And then at the bottom, you'll have a team and folder. You always want to check the team to make sure you have the right one selected, especially if you are invited to multiple teams. And then you can select the folder to decide where that site needs to go into, or maybe it just goes right onto the site list and not within a folder. Once you create a site, this is what that site will look like, where you have your site name on the left, the edit info will allow you to edit that site's information. Along the top, you do have that ability to search, refresh, as well as the three dots here that will allow you to send a link to that site. And sending a link from that menu, from that three dots there, will allow you to put in someone's email, an expiration date, as well as a little message if you like, and send them a secure link with a passcode to access this site in a read-only fashion. This will, of course, allow them to access all of these surveys on that site. But it, as I stated, it is in a read-only fashion. The plus in the bottom right-hand corner here will allow you to create a new site-level folder or a new survey. So I'm going to go ahead and select new survey there. Once you do hit new survey, it's going to take you to this screen here where you have these five options to create your survey uh, and bring in your floor plan. So you have photo gallery, which is going to use your tablet's photo app. Camera, which is going to use your tablet's camera. Maybe you need to take a picture of a paper floor plan, a fire escape plan, anything that you have on hand to get your floor plan into system surveyor. Of course, you have satellite image, which is going to use Google Maps to use, you'll put in an address, it'll pull up a satellite image of that location. So if you need to do an external overview of your site, or sorry, of the location that your survey is at, you can do that. You have your local files, which is going to access your tablet's local files. From here, if your tablet is connected to Google Drive, Dropbox, any uh, cloud storage uh, service that you may be using, you can access those from here. As long as your tablet is connected, um, you will need, of course, internet access to access uh, Google Drive or Dropbox or any cloud storage service like that. Then, of course, you'll have Quick Start, which will allow you to uh, quickly go into a survey with a blank floor plan. I'm going to go ahead and choose Photo Gallery here so I can bring in my floor plan. And once you do select your floor plan, it's going to take you to crop your floor plan. So here I can crop my floor plan to however I would like this to be. On the right-hand side, I do have two buttons here that will allow me to rotate my floor plan if I need to. Once you have it cropped to exactly what you need, you'll just hit next. And that's going to take you in to set your scale. You'll use this blue line where you can drag it around to set your scale. And then, of course, I can make it smaller to measure the exact location that I'm wanting to measure. And you are going to want this scale to be as accurate as possible because this scale is going to be used by both the area of coverage for your cameras as well as any sensors that you place on your floor plan. So once I have that measured to exactly what I'm wanting to measure, I can use this plus or minus to set my distance. And then I can use the plus or minus on this element icon side to change my element icon's size. Once that's all set to how I need them to be, I can then hit next and it's gonna take me into name my survey. So I'll go ahead and give this survey a name. I can also give this an address, pull up that location uh, information, a description as well, and even use the folder here if I had any folders on this site. Once everything is exactly as you want it to be, you'll hit next and that's gonna take you into the survey edit screen here. From the survey edit screen, it is, of course, going to be a drag and drop so I can drag different uh, elements over to my floor plan. And once, as you see, I drag a fixed camera over and with any of the fixed cameras 
multi-lens cameras, PTZ cameras, um, anything that has an area of coverage, you're going to get this area of coverage toolbar that pops up once you do place that element. And this will allow you to manually manipulate that area of coverage here. So I can move it around, I can make it uh, skinnier, wider, do whatever I need, uh, shorter, larger. Uh, I'll also be able to, once I have it selected and I'm on that area of coverage toolbar, I can manually put in this information for the depth of my area of coverage, as well as the angle that I want it to be. So now that I have that set, I can drag that out even further. To the left of that degrees for the angle uh, is the color. And from there, I can change the color of my area of coverage, as well as how transparent it is. So I can make it super light if I need to. And then of course, to the left of that, you'll have the camera icon that when you press it, will allow you to open up your tablet's camera, take a picture, Hit use photo. And once you do hit use photo, it'll take a couple seconds to bring up the photo edit screen where I can go in and make any annotations that I need on this photo. We also do have an undo and redo button there. So I can draw a line, draw a shape. I can change uh, the thickness of my lines, change that solid fill, and then change that opacity as well. And then I, of course, can change it back to outline. And like I mentioned, we do have an undo and then redo button, so I can undo all of this if I don't want it on there. You also have the ability to drag over a, a your element onto your photo so you can highlight exactly where this uh, element device needs to be in the photo. So very helpful there for you to provide, uh, provide accurate information. I'll go ahead and hit done, and it's going to save that photo and attach it right onto my device. So if I scroll in, if I zoom in here, you'll notice that my fixed camera now has a camera with a one in it, letting me know it has one picture attached. And I can, of course, move this around. Uh, this is going to, what you're seeing here is the element toolbar. And on the element toolbar, you are having the uh, install status. So I can change the install of this to in place. Uh, you, to the left of that, you'll have the color of the icon itself. So I can hit gray, and now that camera is gray in color. If you tap the button to the left of the color, once again, that's a button to the left of the color. That's sort of that uh, area of coverage, and that's how you pull up that area of coverage toolbar. You have duplicate, which will allow you to duplicate the element. But if I push it here, you'll notice it did not duplicate the photo that was attached. So now that I've duplicated it, I can go in ahead and tap that button there to bring up the area of coverage toolbar. Now I have it back in place and exactly what I need it to be. Once again, if I close that element, uh, that toolbar, that area of coverage toolbar there, I'm back on the regular element toolbar and to the left of that camera, which once again will allow you to take a picture and attach that photo directly to your element, is going to be how you get to the element information. And this is where you go to fill out all of your device's information. So, you know, your manufacturer, your component model number, your device price, any installation notes that may be necessary, any functional information, all of that is going to be in the element information for you to all fill out, as well as use your element profiles if you have any set up to bring that information in. So now that I've used that, you can see it filled out that function information. And as I go to my name, it gives me a descriptive label as well. So now if I hit done, I'm back in the add element section. And from here, of course, we it is a drag and drop, but one thing you'll notice on the 2.0 app is going to be the search function. So now I can go in here and search, oh, I need a single door. And I, as I begin typing single, you'll notice it got rid of some of the system types. And as I open up the remaining system types, it is showing me what it thinks I'm looking for by completing the rest of that, what I was typing. So now that I'm, it has a single door that I was looking for, I can drag this over, drop it right in place. And now when I go into, uh, on that element toolbar here, I can duplicate it out. I can change the color. I can also go into the element information. But since the single doors are a container, I always like to highlight that you can drag and drop other elements inside of them. So I can drag and drop this card reader, drop it right in place. So instead of placing the components of my door just around that door, I can place them right inside to show, hey, these go directly with this door. And then as I go into the element information here, I can navigate between the door, the container or door itself to the card reader, to the electronic lock set, to the request to exit. So now I have all of those on their own element information, but I can cycle through to get to exactly what I wanted to get to. And from here, I can even, from the element information here, I can even tap that uh, camera icon, open up my 
uh, camera, hit use photo. And we're going to go ahead and hit save, hit done here because we don't need to add any annotation now that photo is attached to my request exit. So I'm going to drag and drop another single door on here. And as I go into the element information for the single door, you can, of course, use your element profiles for your inside, for your containers as well. So as you can see, it brought in the elements that are included in my element profile there. So now I scroll into a back out here just a little bit. And now I want to show the cable pass. So of course, I'm going to drop in a node there in the office or in the server room. I'm going to drag over my flex cable path. And as I drag this around and manipulate it more, I'm getting more points to manipulate this cable so I can show it to be exactly how I need it to be. From here, of course, I can duplicate it. I can change the install status. And then, of course, go into my element information. And under the functional tab, this is where I add the cables that I need for this cable pass. So I maybe need an HDMI. It is the plug side. This is the jack side. I can hit OK. And now it has that cable on there as part of that cable pass. So those are where you'd go to add the element. Going to go around some of the other features that are new with System Surveyor 2.0. And of course, we do have still have the drawing tools and they are the 2.0 drawing tools. We do have that free draw. You can change that thickness of your line. You can change the color super easy as well. And then of course, you have that undo and redo also. Then you have, of course, your element information. And that's just going to show your element information as you tap through your different elements. And save here, go right back into it. And as I said, the element information is as you type, as you tap through your element, that's going to be uh, allowing you to bring and view that element information. You have your totals, which is something that's new to System Server 2.0 here, where I can go through and see the different totals that I have for each element name. I can change it to the installation status. So I can see, okay, I have two cameras, one's proposed, one's in place. I can even group this by model number so I can see the different models that I have in use here. So I go through, you can see some are models have selected, some have no models. So it's showing me the breakdown there. And then of course I can group by containers here to see what's in each of my containers that I have selected. Then of course you have your photo tour, which is going to show the photos that you have. And as I go through, I can see uh, them grouped by element names so I can see, okay, that single door doesn't have one, that card reader doesn't have one. But then as I go through and group them by containers, there's the single door on that request to exit. So it's a great way to go through and see all of your different photos. And there's that request to exit as well there. It's a great way to see all the photos that are on your survey here. And then last but not least, you have your survey information that's going to allow you to uh, edit that survey info. Then, of course, along the top, you have the back button, which will show, take you out of your survey. As we go back in, you have to the right of that, you have the filters. So if I were to tap that those two squares there, I can go into the filters and decide, oh, I don't want to see the AOCs. I don't want to see the element IDs. Um, I don't want to see the infrastructure system type. I don't want to see the video surveillance system type. So it allows you to filter all of that out, and you can even filter by install status as well. You have the search, which will allow you to search for a specific element. So as I begin typing FCAM, it's only it's getting rid of what it doesn't think I'm looking for there. So very helpful, especially when you do have a lot of elements and you're looking for a specific one. You have the dollar sign, which is going to be your budget estimator range. You have save, which is very important. Save as often as you can. You have done editing. And then you have the three dots here, which is going to be uh, where you have your uh, survey settings, if you will. So in from this little three dot menu, you have the ability to export this as a PDF, send a link, and this send a link is the survey send a link. So if I were to send a, hit that send a link, I can put in someone's email, uh, put in an expiration date, send a little message and let them know uh, that they now have access to view this survey in a read-only fashion. So once again, it's a read-only fashion. So they'll be able to click on things, view information, but they will not be able to edit via this send a link. So then going back into that three dot menu, this is also where you can go to set your scale, change your crop, replace your floor plan. 
which uh, essentially is going to take you through starting a new survey. But with that floor plan that you create, it's going to slide it right underneath all of the elements that you already have in place. Um, I do encourage people to duplicate their surveys before they do the replace floor plan, just in case you, you uh, set the scale wrong or anything and your elements shift, you have that original version to look back at and move your elements back to their original places. You do have the reset element colors on this menu as well. And then, of course, the element icon size where I can make them smaller, make them bigger. And then, of course, your global AOC transparency is here as well. So now we're going to save one more time, hit done editing. Uh, now I can see. So even when I'm not editing this survey, I can still see the photo tour and the totals and the element information. So you do not need to be editing a survey to see that on your tablet. Then I'll back out to the site level. And then this is a site level. And let's imagine I was working offline. Um, now I need to upload my survey. So all I need to do is you see that survey I just created the sitting in upload. So now I can hit upload. Once I'm on a stable internet connection, it's going to go through, upload the survey for me. And once it's uploaded, it's uploading the photos. Now it's synced. Now it's going to show as download. So if I wanted to continue working on this survey from my tablet, I just hit this download. It's going to download that survey for me. And now it's synced. I can open it and go ahead and do any editing that I need to do. I uh, just want to go around some of the settings really quickly that aren't in the System Surveyor 2.0 app. So of course, under account here is where you'll see your device options. And when you click into this, you have the option to save photos to your camera roll, which I, we always encourage everyone to have that turned on. Auto sync, um, I encourage people to have that turned off, especially if you're gonna be working out in the field a lot, uh, just because you don't wanna ever have that auto sync turned on and you're saved and your survey is trying to sync, but maybe you lose connection when you're out in the field or the connection isn't as strong um, and you might lose something during that sync. So very best uh, to have that turned off just in case, especially if you're gonna be out in the field. Then you have sync over Wi-Fi only. And with that setting turned on, your tablet will only sync when you're over Wi-Fi. So if you do have field text or anybody that's going to be out in the field a lot, maybe that's a setting you want to encourage them to have turned on so they're not accidentally syncing something that's not over a secure Wi-Fi connection. Of course, you can back out of that. And then you have your update elements update element profiles. If you do have element profiles that your team has newly added on the web app for System Surveyor, you may want to open up your System Surveyor 2.0 app and go ahead and hit that update element profile so that you can get the latest element profiles from your team's account. You also, from this site level, you have on the survey preview, so you have these three dots that you can tap and are going to open up this menu here. From this menu, you have your, your release edit, your duplicate, which I mentioned when we talked about replacing the floor plan. So that's where you'd find that duplicate. Turn auto sync on. If your auto sync is off for a survey, that will say on. If it was turned on, it'd say turn auto sync off. You have your delete, send a link. So once again, that's gonna send a link to that survey that would allow someone read only access. And then of course you have your report survey and you may hear from our, if you ever speak with our support team, uh, you may hear them ask you to report that survey. And that is what they're referring to. And that just sends the survey data into a text file. So as I tap it here, uh, it created a text file for me that I can then email into the support team, which is support at systemsurveyor.com. And that is System Surveyor 2.0. Um, one last thing I do want to show is when you tap on where it says synced or syncing, if your survey, if your if your app is doing some syncing, when you tap it, that will open up that sync queue, and this will allow you to see what's currently syncing, what may have failed to sync. So very helpful for you. To, I'll be able to tell if you have a server that's pending upload or anything like that. I always when I check your sync queue and see if you have something that's stuck uh, uploading. Well, thank you all for joining. Uh, uh, for watching the System Surveyor 2.0 overview video. I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day.